on this slide, we're going to be looking at energy in chemical reactions. And we're going to start with exothermic reactions. Therm um, is a root that's suggesting heat, um, and exo is a prefix that's telling us that heat is exiting. So if I watch a video of sodium reacting with chlorine gas, um, I can see that there's a lot of light given off, which is one form of energy. It would probably feel hot if you could feel it also. Likewise, if I look at the natural gas that's burning in my stove or my um, furnace, then I would see that, hey, yeah, I hope my stove is giving off heat. And again, that is some energy. So when we talk about exothermic reactions, <clears throat> we talk about that reaction gives off energy, it releases energy, or another word we could say is it loses energy. Um, and if I can feel, sometimes I'll see light, but if I can feel these, they would feel hot, and that heat is energy. Um, the last way that we can look at these exothermic reactions or for today is we'll look at um, a graph of energy or sometimes you'll see H, which can stand for heat or enthalpy. And then on the x-axis, we'll see reaction progress. In other words, the reaction starts here and is progressing. So in an exothermic reaction, we start with our reactants having a lot of energy tied up in their bonds. And then after the reaction proceeds, we see that our energy falls and so we have more energy tied up in the reactants than we do tied up in the products. And this is the energy that's lost, or the change in energy, or the change in heat. And we're always going to see a negative sign. It's like if you lose money, that's a negative thing. Okay, here we're losing heat. So in contrast, let's look at endothermic reactions. And again, we can see there's this therm component of the word, so that's some heat. Um, and here heat is entering. Um, so if you have a cold pack, that would be ammonium chloride, and you break it and it dissolves in water, it feels cold because it sucks all the heat out of you. Um, likewise, to make the reaction ADP turning into ATP, you have to add energy and then you store that energy in your ATP. So we just want to contrast these two um, concepts. So instead of giving off heat, um, we would say you take in heat, um, or you absorb heat, or you gain heat, take in, absorb, gain, and that would be all energy. And instead of feeling hot, if I touch one of these reactions, nope, it doesn't feel hot, it feels cold. Um, so you can see how that's opposite of my exothermic reaction. Um, now, let's draw a sketch, an energy diagram is what these are called. So I've got energy, or maybe H, on the y-axis. I have reaction progress on the x-axis. This time, my reactants don't have quite as much energy in them to start with, but as the reaction happens, they're gaining that energy that we saw up here. So my energy goes from where the reactants are to where the products are. And this would be my change in energy or change in heat. And we're always going to see a positive sign for that because it's a positive thing if you gain heat or money or whatever. Um, so that's my contrast of exothermic and endothermic. Lastly, let's look at some similarities between the two. Um, so on both of these, we're going from reactants to products. And considering the energy change as we do that. Um, on both of them, we're looking at the energy change, and this delta is just a symbol that means change. So we're saying, hey, something about the energy changed, um, and we saw that written as delta E or delta H. Um, and often in these reactions, we can measure some kind of temperature change, um, and that's just one form of energy.